What's going on everybody? So I was pretty excited to get my hands on these. I did pick them up on launch even before the, uh, the regular non-pro version was available because to me the colorway just looks so sick and uh, I was very excited to try these out. Of course today we're going in depth on the all new Under Armour Tri-Base Rain 4 Pro. So stay tuned. So as you see here, we have a bright orange and what they call a quirky lime, which is a slight green, highlight, high-vis yellow type of combination. But as always, we will start on the bottom of the shoe. Here you see we have the Tri-Base outsole. Tried and true, very planted, very stable. Across a majority of Under Armour's training shoes, you have a multitude of directions. For the traction surface, it really does bite and hug the ground while still having a lot of natural motion flex grooves in the toe box. So you do have two different densities of rubber on it as well. And you can see in this medial side, some of the different codes for the rubber, but overall traction is not an issue. They do feel very stable and secure to the ground. Moving up into the midsole, it is micro G. It is a heel to toe drop of two millimeters. It is as low as they get without being a Chuck Taylor or a van, which is a zero heel to toe drop. They are completely flat. Here you do have the slightest, ever so slightest. They do feel pretty flat when you're wearing them on feet, to be honest with you. You do not notice any difference of the heel being slightly higher than the toe box. But the comfort and the responsiveness are what's really there with Micro G. That's what's always been special with Micro G, is it's an extremely responsive type of foam. It does return energy and get you back in step rather quickly while still providing a pretty firm and stable overall feel. It does handle weight very well. This is their Under Armour's flagship training shoe even over the Project Rock line. Uh, there was a price increase which we'll, which we'll discuss later but the base has not really changed from the two from actually from the beginning. They've been using this Micro G and tri-base design pretty much the whole way through the line. Moving into the toe on the upper, you do have a thin knit mesh type of feel. It is very breathable, very flexible, yet there's a lot of different texturing for durability. So you can see there's slightly shinier spots in the material. Those are actually higher wear areas and there's a little added layer type of synthetic as you can see here to the high wear areas of toe offs and such with these do bite pretty well the rubber does come up quite high on the toe and there is just enough material here to separate it to where even if your toe hits it's pretty well supported to where it's not going to hit the rubber directly so the material here is actually quite nice breathable flexible and durable that's all you can really ask from the shoe Moving into the midfoot, so you look at the lacing system, it is midfoot straps for all of the lacing eyelets with a knit mesh type of tongue. So this is a booty design, as you can see. Very flexible, very snug, sock-like fit, but there is a difference in the layering here. As you can see, this knit mesh material goes all the way through the entire last of the shoe with a mesh overlay, with this synthetic mesh overlay with the extra material that runs all the way up moving into this lateral and medial side where you have this thin TPU type of caging to really lock and hug the foot back into the heel cup. So lockdown is very snug and secure on this. There is a little bit more of a mesh material here as well so you don't lose any of that breathability from the inner material but you still can maintain some structural integrity 
throughout the shoe for added stability and lockdown for medial and lateral movements. Moving into that heel counter and heel cup that I was talking about, it's actually quite thick and durable. This is a slightly harder TPU. So once you're locked into this shoe, I haven't experienced any heel slip issues. As you can see by the shape, it's contoured to hug up to the top of your heel and then go into your Achilles. This actually is quite comfortable and does the job very, very well. I don't have any lateral or medial stability issues and I don't have any heel slip issues in this shoe either. There is some lovely step in comfort here. It's just a standard insole. Um, it is removable. If you want to fight it, you can, you can, you know, definitely get this insole out. As you can see here, it's just a standard EVA foam. Nothing special, but it fits in so snugly that you kind of have to fight to get it out and to get it back in, honestly, in the right spot because it's such a snug form fit. And then, like I said, with that booty design, it's very soft, yet there is a little bit of padding here where it says try base for where you're going to lace up so there's no tightness where the knot's going to be there's just enough padding to where when your foot flexes it won't create any discomfort and then there is additional padding going all the way around right above where that heel cup comes right above your heel before the achilles so they really step their game up with the contour of this shoe the construction and the fit are great i would say go to true to size on this this is my standard eight and a half men's that I usually wear in Under Armour training shoes. I do have about the same amount of room that I have in the Project Rock 4, where it's about a third of an inch, a little less than half an inch, not quite a quarter of an inch, which is perfect for me. There's enough room for my toes to flex, spread, and breathe, yet still a nice snug contained fit. You can actually see where it started to mold around the shape of my foot through a few wearings. So they do break in rather quickly. The construction I think is superb on these for what they're designed for and the fit, the last is great. Moving into Olympic and power lift. So a lot of people like to train in a zero drop off. I understand Chuck's barefoot just in socks and things like that here it was built for the lifter in mind with a two millimeter heel to toe drop it's very easy to sit in your heels when doing deadlifts when doing squats when doing heavy olympic movements power movements with a barbell this is very planted and firm to the ground i actually really really like doing power movements in this shoe this is rocketing to the top as my favorite lifting shoe. Is it my favorite overall shoe? We'll discuss the other cap cat categories here in just a minute. But when it comes to power lifting and Olympic lifts, more CrossFit style training with barbells, power cleans and so on, very stable, very secure, yet still responsive enough to do all the other things that come with agility and plyometrics. We'll, like I said, we'll discuss that in a little bit. This is extremely stable. I was very impressed. This is my first of the Tribase Rain line, and I honestly don't want to go back to the previous models because I find this model so damn good. This is a fantastic lifting shoe. This is great for those of you that are really into the heavy power movement style, but you still want something versatile enough to do other types of workouts and not just hang out by the squat rack in the Olympic sec uh, section of the gym all the time so i think this provides a lot of features that can really benefit some of you that are heavy lifters i had no issues with stability i did not feel compression even though it's micro g and it's squishy enough to get some responsiveness i never felt that very planted very stern very stable and extremely firm overall for power lifts i think this is a great lifting shoe Moving into plyometrics, agility, and running. Okay, so this is where it shines and not so shines at the same time because it's a variety of topics here. With plyometrics, the responsiveness, the on, the on your toes movements, fantastic. This is great for plyometrics. It's got the right type of responsiveness where it's not so firm that you'll get some discomfort and foot fatigue quickly. That's not the case here. This micro G midsole does its job. The flexibility is there. This isn't too heavy of a shoe. You do have a strong athletic fit and feel to this shoe to where you can get up and go. You can really get down with some plyometric movements here with box jumps and so on. It actually shines for box jumps. Great for lifting, but great for plyometric and agility style movements. Lateral movements start and stop. You have all of the flexibility 
and feel that you would need to do those types of movements. Now, when it comes to running, this is where I was saying it shines with one category, then it takes a bit of a hit in another. So there was some serious foot fatigue for me when running on the treadmill with this, even after they broke in, because these broke in faster than the Project Rock 4, okay? They really formed around my shoe within two workouts. It was broken in. It took about three workouts going into the fourth for the Project Rock to really break in. This shoe is not the best choice for running. Sprints and short distances, totally fine. Especially once your foot gets used to it and it really breaks in fully and forms around your foot. If you're used to more minimalist style shoes for running, you'll be fine because the stability, it's so stable that it takes away some of that heel striking comfort here. Obviously, it's not the worst in the world. It's the heel to toe drop, I think, is what makes the biggest difference for the foot fatigue. Because if you do heel strike, it's not like with a running shoe or a higher stack shoe like the Project Rock that's got like an 8 millimeter offset, where your heel is going to strike to where your foot's almost level when your heel strikes. Whereas heel here, when your heel strikes, your toe is going to be up in the air and then you're going to roll. So your foot, all the muscles and, and tendons in your feet are going to work that much harder including your calves and shins because there's going to be a lot more heel toe action if you're a heel striker now if you stay up on your toes and you do shorter strides not too bad that's where i say it's good for sprints and short distance but if you're looking to do 5ks and above even 5ks i would steer clear of this this is where it takes a hit so if you're one that likes to run a lot not the best shoe for you casual and bodybuilding style so all day step in comfort it's actually not bad it's not bad to walk around. I wore these for several hours over the last handful of days. And the walking around comfort, totally fine. Now, would I want to wear this for an 8 to 10 hour shift at work where you can wear shoes like this? Nah, probably not. But as far as bodybuilding style workouts where you're on benches, you're grabbing dumbbells, you're working the cables and so on, totally fine. They are comfortable enough for, you know, a couple of hours here and there. But it's not something I would want to wear all day. Absolutely not. Regardless of how I feel about the look, which this colorway may turn some of you off, I love the loud, bright colors when it comes to training shoes. And uh, this is not the best casual all-day type of shoe. It does totally fine for casual lifting, bodybuilding style workouts, commuting from to and from the gym, having your shoe on if you're not the type that keeps your training shoe in a bag and puts it on when you get to the gym. If you like to wear to and from, this is totally fine for that. Just not something I would want to wear all day. Pricing. So like I was saying, this is the pro model. So the standard model is 120 USD. The pro model is 150. You are paying a $30 premium for upgraded materials and upgraded lockdown and stability features. The, the standard model just recently came out. I did take a look last night at the recording of this on Under Armour's website. And it is much less aesthetically pleasing overall. And the material looks to be a thick layered mesh versus this booty design with this thin synthetic type of feel with these durable overlays going around. It doesn't have the same structure of material and it does not have these medial and lateral TPU lockdown assets. So this stuff here, it makes a difference. I really do feel a difference in this shoe by having this type of lockdown setup for the medial lateral side in the midfoot. It does make me feel nice and secure. So that's what I believe you're paying for. This is the only colorway in the Pro as well. You're paying for the loud colorway also. Um, this is, you know, safety colors, bright high-vis orange and yellow and green. I mean, it screams, people will see this shoe. If you want a shoe that's gonna stand out, this shoe will stand out. But that's the $30 premium that I see, is it is upgraded materials overall, including additional stability features that are not found in the standard model. That's up to you to decide if it is worth it to you, but I gotta be honest with you, for as much of a Project Rock fan as I am, I mean, I'm wearing a Project Rock shirt right now, I love the line. Still my favorite training line overall, but I think this is Under Armour's best training shoe. I would take this over the Project Rock 4. This is a more comfortable ride. This is a more stable ride. This is just as breathable and flexible, but the responsiveness and the break-in time are just better. It breaks in even faster, and the responsiveness 
is not the same because this is ex complete, almost completely exposed micro G, which is known to be extremely responsive and bouncy versus the hover is pretty well encased and encaged in an EVA carrier foam, rubber wrapping up around it. The hover foam, the hover midsole on the Project Rock 4 doesn't have as many openings to expand and compress and really give you the full benefit of what the hover does. It makes for a firmer ride than you would anticipate, especially versus previous Project Rock models in the two and the three. The four is a much more firm, stable base, don't get me wrong, than previous models, but this is just as stable, if not more, and that much more responsive. And for the same price point, if I was buying one pair, I would take the Tri-Base Rain 4 over the Project Rock 4, especially having put them both through my types of workouts for several workouts each. I would say this is the better overall shoe. That's my final thoughts. If any of this sounded helpful to you, I'm glad because that's what this video is here for. Um, they do only come in this colorway at the recording of this, so if this colorway is not for you, then maybe this, this shoe is going to be a pass for you. I'm not sure how the standard model performs in comparison because the upper materials is a bit different overall and the structure, but I got to say, I really, really dig these shoes. This is the best Under Armour shoe I've ever trained in, and I have most of the Project Rock line, and I have some of Under Armour's other older training shoes with Micro G as well, and they can't touch this and overall performance for my style of workouts. Well, that is my thoughts and experiences with the Under Armour Tri-Base Rain 4 Pro. And until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. How many of you have already gotten your hands on this? Uh, I'm, like I said, I these broke in so quickly. They are so responsive yet stable. This is on par with Metcons for how much I enjoy lifting in them. You know how stable the Metcon line is. I, I would rival the stability there for those. Obviously, I don't do rope climbs. I forgot to touch on that for you guys. The rubber does wrap up on both sides for that. How are they on rope climbs? I couldn't even begin to tell you. I don't do rope climbs, so that's always a useless feature for me. I guess that's why it was so easy to forget about. But damn good shoe damn good shoe like i said to me i think this is under armor's best option available for training overall at the moment as long as you're not a big runner and you don't need your training shoe to double as a running shoe for distances beyond say a mile to two miles you should be good and until next time i will say if you get your hands on these and you implement them into your workouts you might end up thanking me later have a good one guys